today's problem, water changes are just not keeping the nutrient levels down. But we got the top 10 things to get you past this. This is Beerus TV Problem Solvers. If water change is not keeping your nutrient levels down is your problem, this video is the solution, starting with number one. The first step is understanding that water changes or dilution of the water won't work on your nutrients unless your filtration beforehand is working effectively. That means like particles like whole waste, uh, these things get taken out by your filter socks, mechanical filtration, particles and organic compounds is your, the performance of your skimmer. Uh, the inorganic molecules, things like refugium, scrubbers, these types of things will pull all of these broken down nitrates and phosphates first, and then water changes just helps the process. So if you're doing water changes and you're saying, hey man, my nutrient levels won't stay down, one of two things is probably happening, or maybe three, is uh, A, I'm feeding way too damn much, uh, B, uh, my filtration isn't working, I'm not, I don't got my skimmer working, I don't got my filter socks working, I don't got uh, my refugium working, my scrubber working, or C, I'm just not doing enough water changes to keep up with the fact that my feeding's super heavy or my filtration is weak. Number two, you can actually select your size of water change and frequency to a goal, and it's actually pretty accurate, as long as you understand the net effect of dilution. Mm. Uh, meaning, if we started with about one part per million uh, addition of nitrate every single month, what happens is we do water changes and we watch that thing rise. Uh, we'll tell you what it is if you did a 10% water change monthly, a 30% and 50%, and you might be surprised at the results. So starting with 10%, once a month water change, now this is the light end, and so don't be surprised with the results here. Yeah. Uh, my one part per million addition of nitrate every single month at the end of six months would turn into 4.2, and at the end of 12 months, 6.5, and at the end of 24 months, it would be 8.2, meaning eight times. eight times your monthly addition is about where it stabilizes at after two years. And that might not sound so bad if you had one part per million addition and it ended at eight and two years, so be it. But if you had a 10 part per million addition in a month because you feed a lot or your filtration just isn't great, well, that means you're gonna land at 80 uh, oh. and probably not good. Uh, so yeah, understand that a 10% water change really is reliant on the fact that you have really excellent uh, filtration already and feeding practices. So what if we scale that up to a more common size water change that's about 30% a month. In this case, that one part per million nitrate at six months only winds up being two at 12 months and 24 months, 2.3 respectively. So that means at, oh, at six months, this thing caps out. So whether you have 10, uh, one or 10, you can expect that you're only gonna get double of that. All right, but what if I didn't want my nitrate and phosphate to rise at all? What size water change would I need then? And the answer is actually 50%, yeah. meaning that it will never go higher than the single month's addition as long as that's stable. Uh, meaning at uh, six months, my one part per million after the water change uh, would be 0 0.98. And at 12 months, 0 0.99. And at 24 months, 0 0.99 meaning it will never go above whatever it is that you're adding in that single month, right? And maybe a really good solution if, you know, you just acknowledge the fact you like to feed a lot or your filtration just isn't that great. <laughs> and for example, the E170 that we set up, uh, the skimmer is kind of mediocre on yeah, that thing. Yeah. Uh, and uh, we didn't have a lot of filter socks or any other types of uh, nutrient export. We were just reliant on water changes. And you can see why that automatic water change schedule actually produced a flourishing tank without perpetually rising nutrients. So number three, the solution and what we recommend is weekly 10% water changes. At the end of the month, that net result is about 34%. So right in that sweet spot where you won't expect more than double what your input is or double where it is at the end of the month. So that's not just nitrates and phosphates. That also includes a dilution of 34% in a month for contaminants that might be in your tank. Yeah, so that really fits anything that you're looking for. It could be you know 30 to 40% once a month, or that 10% once a week, that stability that you find from not changing too much, but making sure you stay where you wanna be. 
All right, number four is actually understanding the frequency effect, and it's probably not as important as most people tell you. Uh, so you can just think about this, though, when you're selecting the right water change for your nutrient solution or just pollution export, as you mentioned. Uh, in this case, the net effect of four 10% water changes is not the same as a one single 40 because you kind of end up changing out some of that fresh water yeah. or a small portion of that every time. And people say that a lot, but it really isn't that big of a change. So obviously at 40%, uh, once a month, you'll change up 40% of the water, it'll drop 40%. If you did two 20% water changes, which is probably a little bit more stable than that, it's a 30%, 6% net effect. So like you're missing about 4% of the benefit. I don't know if really many people care. Uh, if you do 10 or four 10% water changes, it's 34.4. So, uh, you know, a 10% water change is really manageable. It's really easy to do. Mm -hmm. uh, it doesn't take up a lot of time. It's really stable because you're not changing a lot of parameters, more than 10% in any single week. And you only lose just a few percent, meaning like five and a half percent of the water. And even daily, if you take that 40% and split it up daily, it's 1.33% uh, a day. Uh, and that's what people do with auto water changes. And it sounds like it might be a little wasteful. People say that all the time about auto water changes. But the net effect is the difference between a 40% water change in a month versus 33.08. Yeah. It's really not that much different. And if you think about it, for a lot of people, it might be the difference of one bucket of salt every couple years. Number five is not relying on water changes. For nitrate and phosphate reduction, you're just slowing the progression with water changes. The real solution is your filtration, the mechanical filtration for large whole pro, uh, particles, the uh, skimmer for inorganic compounds, the refugium and scrubber for the inorganic compounds. Those are your tickets to lowering nitrate and phosphate. Yeah, so if you're not catching it yet, this is a combination. It's a combination of the input of how much you feed, how much you export with all of your filtration methods, and then the water changes is actually just a catch-all for when those things aren't working or we haven't perfected them yet. Number six, if your levels are already really high and you need to get them down, there's one thing that's probably the most important thing you'll hear today, is water changes are a way better solution to get them down than using some of the magic hammers. So if I had 40 parts per million nitrate and I just dumped organic carbon in there to uh, explode the bacterial population, strip all the nitrate out, bad move. <laughs> if I had four parts per million phosphate and then I dumped in some GFO or some lanthium chloride to strip it all the way down to zero in a single afternoon, bad move. Nothing good. Way better is if I did a 30% water change once a week until I get the levels down to where I want them, which is probably three or four weeks, and then use the tools to help you maintain those new levels. These are tools not to strip it out or hammer it down. It's to help you maintain those levels afterward, have a much more stable tank and better success. Number seven, you hear us say this all the time, the easier it is to do something, the more likely you are to do it. And such is the case in water changes. Make them easy on yourself, you know? Use some tools or change the way that you do water changes. Instead of lugging around five gallon buckets, and if you had to do 20 gallons, that's four buckets, uh, get a big brute trash can, put it on wheels so it's easy to walk around. Instead of uh, doing a siphon and walking away from the bucket, you know, put a pump in the tank and draw the water out much faster so that the water changes are quicker and easier to do. You know, make large batches of salt water, probably a month's worth of salt water at a time, and that way it's ready to go when you are. Yeah, I mean, there is the heart of it. If it's easy to do, you will do it, and then it'll be effective. If it's hard to do, you will eventually stop doing it, and it won't <laughs> be effective. There are some favorites in there for me. The python is a big one. You can screw it on your sink, start the water, it starts to siphon, water pours out down the drain, never goes on your floor. Mm -hmm. Really easy. Uh, because it goes into your sink, you don't have to worry about uh, leaks and stuff the same way. Uh, also, the pump that you mentioned, instead of waiting on a siphon to slowly suck water out of it, yeah. Go buy a big CJ pump, dump in the tank, and you can do a 20% water change, man, in a matter of like two minutes instead of 20 minutes. I mean, you're way more likely to do it. And you can flip it around, actually fill it in the same uh, amount of time. Yes. And the hose from the Python can be in an entirely different room. So think about all the different ways. Number one, though, more important than probably all of them for me, 
is make up an entire month's worth of salt, maybe even more than that at once, and pick a salt that stores well. Tropic Marin for us has been uh, the number one uh, for storing over a period of time without affecting uh, any of the parameters. Did really well in all of Randy's experiments. So. Get a container that is the size of whatever you need for the month and mix up at least one month's worth of salt water. And it'll make it way, way easier to do them. Number eight, obviously automating them is the easiest possible way to do water changes, make sure they're done all the time. In this case, you could actually get a bin that will hold three months worth of water, mix it up. And the only thing you'll ever do with your water change now is once a quarter, dump a bucket of salt and some water <laughs> together and they're just gonna happen. Uh, you're going to want a reliable pump. Reliability is the most important piece of this and accuracy. Mm -hmm. uh, I know Camor and maybe there's some other standalone options that are out there, I haven't actually used them, but the Neptune Dose, by far the most popular one within the reefing community. You yeah. do need an apex to plug it in, but uh, in this case you have a accurate, calibratable, reliable pump that the community has used for auto water changes for a long time. It can pump a really, really long way, go through multiple floors even, uh, and we run it all over the warehouse. We got 50 of them going here, uh, and now, all the water changes sucks a little bit out every day, puts a little bit back. You could do it in uh, even push button water changes if you want to do larger amounts every once in a while. But if you just set it up to do a daily 1.33% change, you're going to have all that benefit that we talked about earlier of never more than doubling, even over the course of multiple years, the amount of nitrate and phosphate or any pollutant that you would add in a single month. Number nine, if you want to do less water changes, consider how much you're feeding, the inputs that are going in. And this isn't just the, the food that you're putting in, it's the types of foods and the size of the particles. If, you see, if you're feeding big giant mice shrimp and you can see every single piece of it getting eaten by uh, your fish, that's a, a little more effective feeding. But if you're feeding corals, these small particulate foods, dissolved foods like amino acids and things like that, these are things that inherently will not make it to every single mouth that's in your tank, corals, mouths, or fish mouths, which means they will end up somewhere else and decay and turn into nitrate and phosphate. Yeah, broadcast feeding coral foods requires good filtration mm. or an immense amount of coral. Uh, one <laughs> or the other, they're both actually the same thing. Uh, and so, yeah, consider your inputs because you don't want to starve the fish, uh, but if you're overfeeding them and you wanna do less water changes, Solving that equation is part of it. Number 10, the people that do consistent water changes share one unique trait. They're more successful than people that don't. <laughs> uh, and it doesn't mean that people that do different levels of water changes can't be successful at different points of the journey. Mm -hmm. But it does mean as the people that are consistently changing at 30% or around that, will never have the levels rise beyond what they would add in a month. And that's not just the food, that's anything that could go in the food. And foods contain things like copper, there's additives, there's impurities in the additives, and all of those things will rise over a period of time. But if you're doing 30% a month, they'll never rise more than you would add uh, double in a single month. And if you did 50%, never more than you would add in a single month as well. So. You know, understand that part of the reason why those people are more successful is it gives you that peace of mind and that buffer against all the mistakes that we all make and just don't know about. Okay, so water changes as a nutrient export solution solved. What's next? How long should you mix your salt water? Well, we have the answer right here. I can guarantee you that most of you aren't doing it long enough. And how long can you store your freshly mixed salt water? I can also guarantee you this, some of them you can store almost indefinitely and some of them not more than a matter of a day.